I want to preface this by saying this film is not an intellectual property, so I will not be addressing it intellectually. It's just 49 minutes of some guy complaining about how bullies and famous characters exist and how that's debilitated his life in some way, despite the fact that he is a quote, famous comedian. So yeah, <laughs> the reason why you're seeing a blank screen right now is because his documentary just starts right the fuck up because the subject is so important that we need to hurry up and see it now. We need a window into the depths of his soul to understand why his pain is so important. Yeah, enjoy this commentary of the problem with that poo. Let's watch. I was doing this show in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, the first Brooklyn. This kid comes up to me and he's like, hey man, I think you're really funny. That's a big deal coming from me. I don't usually find ethnic comedy funny. <laughs> Ethnic comedy? What does ethnic comedy mean? Yeah, it's not ethnic comedy. It's just social justice warrior comedy. Because not all comics of color are this lazy. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Oh, that's a racist Abu joke in Denver. You're the reason I do comedy, sir. Nobody like us exists except this cartoon character. I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna be the best comic in the country. <laughs> 28 years later and the words thank you come again still follow me wherever I go. And those words made me walk like man's second stage of evolution. My name is Hari Kundabolu and I'm a stand-up comic in Brooklyn, New York. No, you're from Brooklyn. I never would have guessed. I've had a great career filled with laughter, critical acclaim. But there's still one man who haunts me. Apu Nahasa Pima Petala. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? I publicly declared my war up who in 2012 on the FX show Totally Biased with W. Kamau Bell. A timeless program that lasted from 2012 to 2013. There's now enough Indian people where I don't need to like you just because you're Indian. <laughs> uh... Because growing up, I had no choice but to like this. And so he rejected the idea of a charming, funny, successful Indian icon and dedicated his life to being the exact opposite. This all started because you asked me to do a piece on your old television show, Totally Biased, when I used to write for it. You said, um, if you don't do this, I will fire you. <laughs> You know what? That's that good is, advice. That's good advice. Good advice. A poo, a cartoon character voiced by Hank Azaria, a white guy. My friend, you seem a bit confused. Voice actors are hired for their voice? Out of every Hollywood profession, voice acting is where race is completely irrelevant. By your logic, should studios fire anyone not matching an animated character's likeness? A white guy doing an impression of a white guy making fun of my father. Also, I think you're being a bit flippant about Hank Azaria's race. Referring to him as a white guy would be kind of disingenuous. If I saw Hank Azaria do that voice at a party, I would kick the sh out of him. <laughs> Incel power fantasies are common with woke comedians. Now I realize some of you think I'm some annoying PC social justice warrior that's very sensitive and is obsessed with a 28-year-old cartoon character. Oh shit, my bad dude. I should have known you were a total alpha as you have the appearance of a depressed, broke-ass 13-year-old Quasimodo with hair like someone mopped the floor of a porno theater with your funky, big chungus looking ass. You're probably thinking, come on, Snowflake, let it go. Yes, yes! Well, I have let it go for 28 years. And now I'm bringing it back up because I pissed on my balls in the shower. I have always loved The Simpsons. <laughs> And yes, I know Apu is one of the smartest characters on The Simpsons. Granted, the bar isn't very high. Uh. I have always loved The Simpsons. I know Apu is one of the smartest characters on The Simpsons, but that's not why people liked him. They just liked his accent. Citation I needed. I never heard anyone say they liked Apu because he exposed the idiocy and bigotry of Americans and the struggles of the average immigrant. No, it was just, I love Apu. That voice is hilarious. I mean, of course it is. It's a fucking like comedy show. What is he supposed to sound like you? I hate Apu. Hate Apu. Hate Apu. When and because of that, I dislike The Simpsons. The great American art of muff diving. <laughs> to snack, clam, munch, rug, park the porpoise. I want to take it through the car wash, baby. 
There's a guy the year after Harold and Kumar came out. He's walking down the street. He was kind of drunk. He stumbled out of a bar, Indian guy, and he goes, Hey, I get called Kumar all the time because of you. And I just looked at him. I was like, it's better than Apu. Yeah. <laughs> telling me that the character who owns his own business, who's highly intelligent, college graduate, legal immigrant, law-abiding citizen, family man, is a worse off character than a fucking directionless, irresponsible weed head who's at odds with his own libido and ruins his and the life of his own friend every time they get together? It's better than a poo. It's better than a poo. It's better than a poo. Shut the fuck up. I'm driving with my dad as a little kid and- Funnily enough, casual racism will be the least traumatic thing to ever happen to Aziz Ansari. I just wonder how many Indian Americans, South Asian Americans, have had to deal with this. This guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. This one character created so many problems. Psychologically, emotionally. He's ruined my life, man. This fucking guy. Oh, celebrities are such the biggest fucking crybabies I've ever seen. Apu represents an America that makes some immigrants. What in the ungodly fuck is this? I feel like if I stare at it too long, the streets will run red with period blood and I'll grow turf bangs. <laughs> My mission is to figure out how we ended up with Apu. Indians working in convenience stores. And how we can get rid of him. Waiting until the U.S. is so bitch made you can bully an actor into giving up his most beloved character because you're having a sad. The thing is, is that the Simpsons stereotypes all races. They stereotype the alcoholic, the deadbeat dad, the F up kid, the overachieving daughter, the Italians, Chinese, Japanese. They spare no expense. And this is the point where you discover the entire documentary is completely pointless. The problem is, is we didn't have any other representation. And how does that make the character bad? No politicians. Wait a minute, isn't that Bobby Jindal, the guy who was accused of kidnapping a chick in an exorcism? Do we really want to be boosting this guy? Apu reflected how America viewed us. Servile. Devious. Goofy. He's goofy and devious? Congratulations, you've just described 90% of the cast. Is showing mainstream America what an Indian is, and it's a pot-bellied dude who can't speak English, has zero, is an idiot. What was the cause of the Civil War? Actually, there were numerous causes. Aside from the obvious schism between abolitionists and anti-abolitionists, economic factors, both domestic and international, played a significant... Hey, hey. Yeah. Just, just say slavery. You guys are full of shit. Full of fucking shit. Is anyone else getting the feeling that all the people complaining about this character are just self-hating Indians who really don't like Indians with accents and own quickie marts? I'm the cool Indian. I'm in that shitty barbershop movie. I'm the cool Indian who mimics black culture. Check it. I just bitch slapped your quickie mart into the 21st century. There's a moment where I'm like, bashing Apu and I'm like, you're a stereotype. Why do you talk like that? And I had an alt where I was like, you sound like a white guy doing a bad version of an Indian accent. Mm, mm, mm. I'll say that. And then you cut to the real Hank Azaria in the booth. That's so good. No, it's not that. And then cut back to the cartoon. Did you do the take? I did, but, uh, but they weren't having it. Really? Well, yeah, I mean, The Simpsons wins. <laughs> oh, someone cue the violins. That's amazing. The Simpsons always wins. <laughs> Man, that is some brilliant comedy writing. No matter how many fingers you hold up, it won't make your dick bigger. So what I do know for sure is that a white dude created a stereotypical Indian voice and a bunch of white writers in a room laughed at said stereotypical Indian voice and this led to the creation of my childhood bully and a walking insult to my parents. Oh, using your parents to bolster your temper tantrum, that's, that's classy. I mean, there comes a time in a man's life when he asks himself, who will float my corpse down the Ganges? So that's you guys. 
<clears throat> today you look like Kia Poo today, Samuel. No, that's not funny. Why do I look like a poo today? Hair, I think. Apu hair. Apu hair. <laughs> to jump to outrage but instead they start roasting him classic <laughs> does it bother you at all that it's a white actor that does the voice of apu hank azaria is a talented guy they paid him he did it and he did it good and is no one going to talk about how his parents have like a much thicker accent than apu the character but apu's accent is so horribly stereotypical Ugh. just say you're ashamed of your parents and shut the fuck up i named apu after the trilogy the apu trilogy by sadi jet ray uh, and i would highly recommend this series of movies fantastic landmarks in world cinema the Apu trilogy is the story of a, a young boy named apu who we follow over the course of three films you see, in the course of his life, both a young man grow up, but also you see the modernization of India. His story is the story of a multi-dimensional human being who grows living through pain and tragedy and beauty. And to have that name then be associated with the Apu of the convenience store, of course, is such a huge diminishment. So never name your culturally defining shit after something that was meaningful to you. Okay, so I guess his parents naming him Hari after Haribo the candy was very fitting because both give me violent diarrhea. When you spoke to Hank Azaria, was there a defensiveness? For the first time, he wants to talk about how he feels uncomfortable with the voice. He mentioned you. Well, he didn't know your name. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And who does really? Because upon hearing about this documentary, people only described him as the asshole trying to get rid of Apu. Had he not thought about it until he saw my bit? Right, he hadn't. 21, 22 years, he had not thought about it. Whoa! A character he voiced in the 80s and 90s that no one fucking thought was offensive because people had thicker skin back then? Like, he never considered that it might be... Bad? What, what, what wizardry is this? To understand my quest to get rid of Apu, you need to understand the complicated and diverse experiences of South Asian Americans in this country. Which we will not be covering. You know, there's always that segment of a documentary where the guy goes around shaking people's hands. It's like, hey, you want to say something for the camera? And how you doing? I mean, he just looks awkward and tries to avoid eye contact. Like, oh, these dirty Indian people. I can't wait to get back to my brownstone in Brooklyn. <laughs> It is my favorite place. Favorite place. And every white supremacist's nightmare. I think that guy would be anybody's nightmare. Look at this dude. <laughs> but all these countries have different makeups, right? They have different languages and cultures and, and religions. But when you grow up in this country, it doesn't really matter. Because you're still going to be called a poo. Uh, what would you prefer to be called? Street shitter? Child wifer? Every time there was a certain kind of focus on Apu's character in relationship to some kind of universal norm, the way in which they talked about it was usually in a particular stereotypical way. Because it's the fucking was, uh, Simpsons. They are satirizing oh, Indian oh, culture. Oh my fucking God. If there was an episode on having children, then Apu had to have eight children. What? what? That is not correct. How did we get eight? When we were having trouble conceiving, I took fertility drugs. I slipped fertility drugs into your breakfast, Squishy. Well, that would only account for quintuplets. Did anyone else slip this woman fertility drugs? I mean, what f f facts? <laughs> what the fuck you need that for? Like this. Is it weird that we're talking about Indian stereotypes and you're an Indian doctor? Yeah, it kind of is. Almost like this documentary is redundant. There's this idea that if there's four white people, anybody will watch it. That's mainstream, that's accessible. Right. But if it's four Asian people or four black people, it becomes like, oh, this is a black show or this is a black movie. Why is it that when there's a show full of white people, that's considered okay and mainstream right. and because the country you're living in is predominantly white i mean if you go to china there's going to be a predominantly chinese cast in everything if you go to egypt there's going to be a predominantly egyptian like this is common sense i mean you can't one second say oh uh white people y'all don't know shit about our experiences we don't know shit about what we have to do and then say that oh everyone should be able to relate to our shows too so so which one is it like either they don't understand or they should should understand or they do understand like what what which, which fucking which is Racist depictions of minority groups is as American as 
racism. Funny how you should bring up racism and blackface being an American thing. Because India actually has a, a history of blackface in their culture, too. <sighs> Uh, you, you know, this, this is what happens when you do research. I decided I needed to talk to an expert on the matter. Someone with an EGOT. Yeah, another celebrity. Not like a real, regular person you could have picked up on the street to talk about this. You know, the ones you were avoiding eye contact with. I wanted to ask you uh, about your collection of black Americana. You have a very yes. large personal connection. I call it Negro Belia. A lot of racist imagery. But mm -hmm. it doesn't horrify you when you see it. No, no. <laughs> I don't understand. She's a brown person. Should she be unrealistically offended by everything like me? But it doesn't horrify you when you see it. No. Do you wear tap shoes, you coon? Does Apu count as a minstrel since it's brown paint, a white guy's voice? I would say so, but he's not singing and dancing, is he? Ah! Yeah, there's, there's... Okay, then he's in the minstrel show, too. Because <laughs> I'm sure the black actors who voice white characters or characters of a different race really want to hear that fucking comparison. A poo is no different than this, or this, or this. Oh, so he really doesn't understand the concept of satire. We needed to talk to Hank Azaria, and luckily, I have agents. Action figures from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hey, man, it's Hurry. Hey, Hari. Yeah, I was just wondering if we have any news about Hank. Check your email. Okay, so it's a forward from his publicist. And it's the same HuffPo article that me and him were both quoted in like three years ago. So he's basically saying that he doesn't want to do the film. And <laughs> no, he's not no, 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 no. You okay? No, I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm okay. No, I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll give him a second. I'm going figure out my stuff. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he tried it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was probably a joke, but let's be honest, do we really believe that? The term Caucasian is nonsense. All white people don't come from the Caucasus Mountains. It was created to give whiteness legitimacy by connecting it to a region of common heritage. White was constructed to keep power in the hands of certain people while excluding others. That just makes no fucking sense. If I don't get him to retire the voice, this whole thing is a failure. It isn't already? So I decided to use Politically Reactive, my podcast with Kamau, to sick my fans on Hank. He won't listen to me, but maybe he'll <laughs> enjoy being told to kill himself several times on Twitter. From like 1991 to like 96, 97 is all just literally cabby, cabby, cabby. Well, honestly, you look like a cabby. You, like, you don't look like you go any higher on any social status. Well, yeah. The good thing is you were hired by an Indian director to be a very prominent Indian character in a very wonderful cartoon adaptation. Again, I offer my condolences on your nephew burning to death in that terrible accident. You think my son is this person the soldiers are calling the Blue Spirit? Yes. Yeah, it's so fucking dignified. Don't you feel so happy that Indians are giving other Indians jobs that improve their career? It's hard, me, hard for me to feel sorry for any of these guys. But Michael Sarah always plays the fucking jittery, nerdy white kid. Because let's be honest, it's the only thing he can fucking play. But I don't see him making documentaries about, oh, the problem with Anthony Michael Hall. Like, no! Thank You Come Again has haunted Indian children for over a quarter century. Why? It's funny because it's racist. Yes. You know that a white guy does the voice? Huh? How do you feel about that? So how much did you pay her for those totally authentic reactions? I don't know whether, because people like imitate him, and I don't know whether it makes it more or less racist to imitate a white guy pretending to be Indian. <laughs> <laughs> people are falling for my bullshit! <laughs> And if Hank is anything like me, he definitely checks Twitter every five minutes. Nope. I always loved stand-up comedy as a kid. Like, it was, like, magic to me. Well, I knew that I wanted to do that. Except I was 17 and didn't have a complicated life. And you weren't fucking funny. Like, honestly, I, I've sifted through this guy's YouTube channel. He's like, he is grim death. And I probably did that for about... 
I don't know, four or five years, uh, and then 9-11 happened. <laughs> Without context, it seems like you're saying that your comedy routine directly led to the events of 9-11. I've had a great career filled with laughter, critical acclaim, and then 9-11 happened. <laughs> I don't see any memes coming out of this. Really? Well, yeah, I mean... The Simpsons wins. And then 9-11 happened. What is up with this effect of, like, of the Twin Towers being reflected in his glasses? That is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. So why was I on stage doing crappy impressions of my parents? Because you're ashamed of them like you are now. You're just uh, expressing it in a different way. All right, so far he has exploited his parents and 9-11 to get his point across. Lovely. The hate when people say they can't see color. They can't, I can't see race. If you can't see race, you can't see racism. Then what good are you to me? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, that's not how that works. Like, they treat people like human beings first before their race. That's what that fucking means, you jackass. I mean, comedy has become just a bunch of ugly, mentally ill jackasses forcing you to pay money to watch them rant. That's it. That is fucking it. Can I bust you on something? Go ahead. Do you think Mr. Burns is one-dimensional? I think Mr. Burns is one dimensional, but he is a one dimensional caricature of a rich maniac, which there are many and who have power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God, this guy's like, mm -hmm. Ugh, I'd rather have anal prolapse than be in this fucking interview. <laughs> look at the look in his eyes. He wants to die. I think a, an Indian convenience store owner whose accent it doesn't have power, especially in that situation. And if I believe that like we should go after people with with more power as much as we can, like does he not see how he looks down on his own fucking people? Like oh, if you have an accent and you work a menial job, I'm sorry, but like you're just not on the same level as me. I'm sorry. No Indian person could ever get up to that level of power that a white man could, or have the emotional capacity to defend themselves against jokes. It's it's the best self drag I've ever heard in my life. How had we been so overlooked by the comedy writers I'd grown up idolizing? It's like they didn't even think of us. You mean they didn't think of you, a privileged American twat? I feel like that still happens in writers' rooms now. It's like whoever sits at the table informs the discussion. So if it's like all white men, you're going to have someone make an off-color joke and not realize the extent to which it is inappropriate. You can tell these motherfuckers have never watched a movie in the 90s that's predominantly black because they, there's so many fucking racial stereotypes in those. <laughs> Papers. You try bullshit. Chow, you get the fuck out. You leave Chow's store. Hip and hop your black ass home. I see you are very much liking to explore STDs also, my friend. That shit on your lip got some shit on his lip. Is that why no puff puff? Pass the dot sheet, my friends. How do I address that point? That's why representation is important. I mean, this documentary is so lazy. All he does is interview his fucking celebrity friends. I'll get my celebrity friends to help me. <laughs> it all just seemed so hopeless. Like your chances of having a decent career. Stop doing this effect. It's like I'm watching a trailer for a serial killer television show. A quirky one that isn't funny. I don't know if you can tweak it. I also don't want them to kill Apu, though it might actually make a good episode. Which oh, I was I was thinking about that, but the idea of like killing the Indian immigrant is also upsetting. Like, there's well, you can't win with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Hey, Harry, the film looks really interesting and thought provoking. I'm glad you're making it. Having said that, that's not good. Okay. Uh, having said that, it's not something I can participate in. I'm not comfortable, one, speaking on behalf of the whole show, two, throwing myself upon the mercy of your edit. I would definitely be open to reconnecting after the film is finished and finding a mutually acceptable forum for us to have a conversation about this. All the best to you, Hari, and keep up the great work. That's great that he uh, he gets to choose how he wants to be portrayed. Yeah! <laughs> like, oh, so I can't demonize you? Fuck you, dude. Fuck you, dude, who owes me absolutely no explanation for how you do your job. <laughs> Fuck you. What a privilege. I want to have conversations, and I want to... Nigga, you blocked me after me just mentioning you. You don't give a shit about conversations. Shut up. This fucking guy. You see why I couldn't do a straight-up review of this? This motherfucker probably thinks he's the 
MLK of the comedy world. You are not, son. You're not even Marion Barry. I'm supposed to take you seriously when you openly admitted that, oh, I'm a privileged kid who had everything handed to him, had no problem in the world, and I adopted other people's problems so I could have something to talk about. Yeah. And you said that without any irony whatsoever. Comics like you are cancer, are literal fucking cancer. And like cancer, I hope you never progress. Yep, wow. pretty much. So this whole thing was a giant waste of time and money. <laughs> Luckily, it was somebody else's money, but still. Oh, he's a big old commie. That's not surprising either. It was just some film about some cartoon character. Well, a whiny bitch complaining hey, about a cartoon character. You know, just your average insult. I mean, Aziz has a show. Mindy has a show. I certainly deserve a show. Dream on, dream away. Sometimes people also ask me, how come when you do impressions of your parents, you don't use an accent? And the answer to that question, of course, is I'm a faggot and I'm proud. Look, you're still allowed to love The Simpsons. All I'm saying is that The Simpsons is like your racist grandfather. <laughs> Homer. All in favor of skipping the poem. Thank you. And one more thing. Uh, me, I'm only like in front of a green screen pretending to punch a guy who doesn't give a shit about my existence. <laughs> oh god, uh, I'm not gonna make you guys make you guys suffer through this anymore because I'm I'm just done. I'm just so fucking done. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'll see you in hell. <laughs>